tent has a perimeter about what you see here where we've set the, the stake. Uh, the peaks, though, I'll be setting uh, horizontal stakes uh, instead of a vertical stake that goes into the ground. The ground is too hard here. Uh, we did have to shovel out some of the snow to get a level ground. There's about uh, probably a good three foot, a uh, four foot of snow here, but uh, we cleared out enough to make it level. And we set up, we first set our floor up in the ground to get a, a, a footprint so we could see where we needed our stakes and what size we needed to clear out. Uh, you can see here, the wind will be coming from this direction. We'll get some really good uh, sun. So, uh, and we'll put the door opening down on this end, away from the wind, so we're downwind. And then we, we have got a good spot. You can see we have a tree here. But uh, it's really good, good for uh, no deadfall, and you can see we don't have any chance of any deadfall or any dead trees around here. Okay, here we go with the uh, the outer tent. That's a C to summit. It's a medium. That's an event compressed bag and a dry bag. Much better than uh, Hillebird's bag. Again, here's the inner tent, and this is an extra small event. Waterproof, compression, dry bag. Uh, I got a dry bag for my sill line. These are tent stakes. I didn't use them on this trip because I did cut wood. Here's my uh, poles. It's a pretty good bag. And then here's the uh, Hilleberg uh, floor. This bag is really small. I wish it was a little bit bigger. I might even go to something bigger because it's very difficult to get both pieces into this bag. You have to fold it just right. So there they are. You could leave this behind. If you use trekking poles and other stuff, you could leave some of this behind. You can definitely leave your floor behind. I don't recommend it, especially in the uh, snow uh, or mud. But in this, I could have left behind on this trip. So you can see the weights that you would reduce if you summer, nice weather, this and this is really all you need. So what we've done is set up the tent in a, and put out the poles on each one of the stake corners just so we know what kind of room we need and, and, and how it's going to fit in here. I originally did all this uh, by laying out the floor and getting a good idea. You can see I marked off some stakes uh, to where we're going to need the uh, floor where we're going to need the tent located uh, the snow the ground is too frozen to actually use stakes like this and drive them in the ground and in the high wind those would get pulled up so i cut a few stakes that you can see here and we're going to put those horizontally in the snow all right i normally don't uh, assemble all my poles and lay them out like i do here in the summer in the winter, when there's not any wind, I do it because I cannot stake the base of the tent down because the ground is so hard. Normally I'd stake the whole base down and then install the, the upper piece, the upper poles in and the upper guidelines. You can see here, I put the guidelines inside the, uh, the, stick, the, the tent pole uh, pocket like this so that the whole thing doesn't get tangled up and you can see every one of them you can see you don't see any guide wire lines out here all the guidelines are inside these pockets so what I do is take these pockets and I make sure that the pocket line is fully extended out like that so I have whole length there and then my two guidelines I make sure they're not tangled up and in the snow I like to use the full length of the guide line in the in the summer I will shorten this line down by about two foot and I have a much shorter guide line but in the winter I use the full length of the guide line and we'll wrap the guide line around this stake and plant it down into the ground out here what you have to do is take your pole and run it down through the top loop through the second loop and into the bottom pocket. I then take the top
top pocket and put it on the top and take out some of the some of the, the some of the, the slack. I'll then take this out and just put it in a into the ground just so I can get all the stakes up and then because it's not windy I can afford to do this. If it's windy I have to go ahead and stake that thing down but because I may want to move them around a little bit it's nicer if it's not windy to go ahead and stake them down put them vertical like this and then I'll lay them in horizontally here once I get them all in. So I'll show you how it looks once it's all in. So after getting the tent set up and all the guide lights in, we don't have any ground stakes at the bottom, but we don't need them in this windy condition, in this frozen ground condition. You can see here we used a rock to hold off some of the, the uh, tent stakes. You can see here, and these rocks are frozen in, they're not going anywhere. Poles fairly straight. And you can see we've got them fairly close to the pole so that if it gets windy in the middle of the night, we still have room to tighten down more. But I doubt we'll need more than that. You can see I've got the, the door closed when I do this setup. I usually close my door and open my vents. That way you don't get these two poles spread out too far apart and you can't zip your door. So always have your door shut when you start. Get the center pole and give you another shot up. Okay, we'll uh, put the center post in. One thing I wanted to show you is that the, you just connect these simple, very straightforward, there's a cord in them, keeps them all together. One thing that you have to make sure you do is always have this little pin in one of these holes. If you have one of these pins and it's sitting like that, this whole thing can come off, you'll lose it, and not only will you lose this, but you'll lose that little pin. So it's important to always make sure your pin is locked when you take down your tent and when you put it up but mainly when you take it down. Let's go inside and install it. To install the center pole, just put it inside the apron, and up it goes. Nice and easy. Okay, here's a inside view of the stove jack as it's installed. You can see I've put it inside the the uh, vent itself on the outer part of the tent. Uh, you can see I've put some uh, really good material here. This is outdoor lawn material, uh, and it's rated for UV. And uh, I've put the sewn in the strap so we can tie back the 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 vent if we still want to. And it's all, uh, the inside I did not seal seam, but you can see uh, Tanya sewed this up really nice with her sewing machine. I end up doing a single stitch by hand, and then she came back there and sewed it up with the machine. And you can see it works really nice. And now you can still use it as a uh, outdoor vent in the summer. I put a little round, uh, I put a little round Tupperware container in the hole and it fits really nice and tight and stops all the water from coming in. This way I did not have to use a second stove jack. We only have to have one stove jack. You'll see once I install the inner tent we just roll down the vent and we don't have to have a stove jack inside the inner tent. This uh, reduces weight in the uh, tent itself. This is the inner tent. You can see I've got it in a, uh, in a vent. Uh, C to Summix uh, compression stuff sack this is the extra small. Uh, the larger outer tent went into a medium. So you can see this opens up really good. It reduces the pack size down to about half of what the normal one would be for the Hilleberg. And you can see we have a dry sack to keep it all nice and dry. So we'll pull this out. And install it. First thing you have to do is line up the door. And you can see here is the door. So we line the door over to this edge.
So you can see I've got my hand in the center pipe. I'll lift this up and get that into the center. I'll then take this up here. I want to wrap this up and get it a little tight. And then there's two primary hooks. You got to make sure that your door is facing the right direction. And then hook these like that on the ring that you see up here. There's two of them. And that's all there is to it. Now we come over to the door and we start hooking in and moving around. This gap makes a big difference in keeping in the heat. And in the summer, it actually keeps in the cool air. Uh, the, without this in the summer, you can really feel the heat come through this green. Now this yellow material makes for a very bright tint inside as opposed to this green outer. But if you wanted to save the weight, you can save some weight by leaving this behind. This is, is a heated tent, so we really don't need it. But, you know, if you're going to go down to 40 below wind chill factors, I highly recommend it. Let's finish this up and we'll show it to you. So you can see we've installed the half of the floor. The nice thing about this tent is that you can install the floor after you have the tent up and, up and installed. So it allows you to actually clear out the snow in here if you had to. It allows you to clean the floor if you wanted to. Pull the floor up and clean it. It's not the best for keeping insects out in the summer. It's not the best for keeping water from flowing up underneath it, but I like it. In addition, I have this quarter section of the tent this section of the octagon will be pulled back and allowed to have the snow exposed where the where the stove is going to go. That so it won't melt. It allows me to uh, uh, baton wood, chop wood, and whatnot in, inside the tent, and we'll pile up other stuff. It also allows you to knock off the snow off your boots when you come in and and things like that, so you don't get the all the snow all over the uh, cover. I start out by making sure that this Hilleberg emblem is up just like I have here. I'll raise this part of the, the pole and set it on there and then start at this corner. And it does have an overlapping hook to, so that the two pieces overlap. And then I make sure that the green part of the tent flap is pulled up underneath like this. Some people will put it on the outside and pack it with snow, but I like it inside. You can still pack snow on the outside of the tent. It, it's not a problem, but you can put it on the outside and pack snow on it. The first thing you do is locate the little clip with the bungee cord on it, pull up the tent, and find this little loop right here. It's a little plastic loop, not the steel one. The steel one is designed to stake down the tent. I put that in, lay over, and then I bring the elastic clip from the floor and attach it to the to the or, to the inner wall okay i've uh packed some snow on the tent outside tent here we were getting a quite a bit of wind coming in on this edge so what i'm going to do is pull the outer cover like i was talking about out you can see we can pull it out here and uh Now we can get a good insulation of snow on the wind side of the tent. You can see here we've got our guidelines buried in the snow with some 2x2 
two foot stakes all the way around and that gives us a pretty good rigid tent see our stove pipe coming up we'll fire that thing up you can see that from chopping wood I got a lot of wood debris in the tent on the floor that's the nice thing about having a removable floor in addition to being able to remove the pull it back for where the stove is but we could take this outside and shake it off and uh, put it back in and it'll all be clean if you didn't have a brush or something like that to wipe it off you can see the Hilleberg tent I'm 5'9 so the Hilleberg tent is just about good enough for me in the center a uh, six foot tall person might have a little bit of problem. Uh, I was so hot last night that I didn't even sleep in this uh, mountain hardware beanie. This is a beanie I usually sleep in at night, but uh, it was just too warm last night for me. Uh, Tanya was a little bit colder. She said that she was actually felt breeze and that at times, although she was on her Exped uh, air mattress and her Nemo sleeping bag. Uh, a little bit of wind coming up underneath the tent uh, was causing that problem. So I'll probably today go ahead and finish pulling out the outer flap on the uh, outer tent and put some uh, snow back around the entire tent because the wind didn't come in where I packed it in last night. Okay, where I had packed the snow around the base of the fold out part of that exterior tent you can see it's stuck up underneath that ice and that snow pretty good the wind blew it in here last night you can see it curved in I'm gonna have to take that shovel and break it loose and get it out okay I'm gonna dig this uh, post out so you can see this stake that I put in the ground here it's really crusted on top first thing I do is grab the string and I pull it where I can find I know it's straight down right there then I dig on either side, and the top is crusted really strong. These uh, held plenty, you know, probably 50 mile an hour gusts last night. Let's hit it. snow has built up you cannot pull this edge of the tent out but you know quick break of the snow that should do it look at that and the tent should be free there we go and then always leave your last stake in for last We'll go ahead and stuff the rest of it in the bag, pull that one up, and hit the road. See, our perimeter melted quite a bit of the snow. Where the tent is, where the stove was, is completely melted out. If you learned something from this video, like it, and please subscribe to my Hang Tough Survival Channel.